All right, my man, we have got a guy in Habib Nurmagomedov that everyone wants to see fight again. He went out at 29-0, and 0, decided to retire, and we've heard nothing but all of these different things about, oh, he's coming back, he's doing this, he's doing that. He went out and put out a statement that I thought kind of sealed the deal on everything. He basically said that he has told his management, who is Ali Aziz, don't call me. If it's about a fight, don't call me. Now, I can understand him not wanting to talk to Ali. That makes sense to me. Okay, but the fact that if his manager is offered a fight, it doesn't matter how much money it's for. It doesn't matter who it's against. Don't call me. I am not returning to fighting. I think his statement basically says it all. We've been going through this the last couple of weeks. People keep saying that, oh, he was going to potentially be, you know, the fight at the main event for 300. I think they tried that, yes, though. Yes, they did. And but then they did. Ollie didn't make the phone call, which is was, <laughs> which, which, which what makes he was him told. a good manager. Yeah, yeah. It's like, don't look. There's there's not there's not enough money in the world for him to do it. That should tell you this is not about money, you guys. And look, he's got plenty of money. Yeah. He's made more money outside of fighting than he has in fighting. I mean, the, the opportunities that he's been. I would. I don't want to say given because he's earned them. But the opportunities that he's earned Agreed. and the people that um, support him, they've done whatever they could to help make him successful. He's got a beautiful new gym in Dagestan. Um, if you guys don't follow it on Instagram, it's really it's a really cool school of just uh, martial arts. Sambo, he's carrying on his father's legacy. You've got himself in there. You've got Islam. You've got all these you know young fighters that are in there helping out, older fighters in there helping out. It's great to see um, the young talent and generation that he's trying to build. There's that. And he's got other gyms all around as well. He's doing a lot of things outside of the sport. He's also educating people, you know, on, on um, being Muslim. And, and I got to give him credit for it because there's a lot of just, I don't want to call it misinformation. But there's a lot of things out there that surround his religion that just simply it's not true. Like there's bad people in every place. And so I love that. I see a lot of these podcasts. I see a lot of these podcasts where he talks about his religion. He talks about what it's like, you know, to, to, to cherish your wife, to respect her, to do this. And all of these things, wives, kids, all of these things. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal to what he's doing, getting out there and spreading, I think a positive word, not just about his religion, but about people. And uh, I really am. In, I really am enamored by what he's been doing lately. And um, I listen to a lot of the stuff that he comes up on my feed all the time. And John, it's it's to think that after you've done what he's done in fighting, and now out there just basically spreading positive vibes, speaking positively about other other things that are important to him, I admire. I admire that a lot, and I'm glad that it, that he has told Ali. No, I have don't don't bother. If you want to call me about a, a business <laughs> investment, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you want to talk to me about your wife and family? Go ahead. Yeah. You want to talk to me about? Hey, we got a fight offer. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I got it. Here's here's the thing, and this is what most people are gonna look at. Habib is a different individual, and if you're around him, you understand that. You know his attitude towards things is different than most. The way he handles himself. He is incredibly calm about everything. But when you take a look, most people are going to say, but you're 29 and 0. You are considered one of the greatest fighters of all time. But many people don't put you there based upon you've never been beaten, but you didn't fight enough or you didn't have enough title fights or any of those things. And so all you need is a couple more. And everyone would consider you the greatest of all time. And he doesn't give a shit. No. He doesn't care at all. That is not what's important to him. You know, I think one of the things that most people don't realize is this is a guy, yes, he's 29 and 0 in uh, MMA. And you're going to hear all kinds of things about, well, he didn't fight anybody when he was coming up. Yes, he did. He fought whoever was there. Okay. But in Sambo, I think he was like 250 something and one. Mm -hmm. I know he had one defeat. Yeah. One. You know, this guy has been doing this for a long time. 
And the fact that he has shifted gears, he has shifted the focus of what's important, not on his fight career, but on his family. You got to give him kudos, man, because the guy could come back and still compete with anybody. It's not like, oh, he's past his prime. He's not. He's he could absolutely come back and compete and compete with the you know the very best. But he's shifted where his attention is at, and he's told his mother that he wasn't going to fight anymore, and he's he's holding his word. You got to admire everything about this guy. Let me ask everyone listening. Let me ask them. I'm ask you the same thing, John. Is does one or two or three more wins make a difference in the long run? No. Does that's what, you, that's what people are going to say? They're going to say it's gonna, but it's not. Does, it's not. It's because what happens is it's never enough. There you go. And it's always going to be one more. Well, you got to fight this someone, one guy. There was always someone that you didn't. Yeah, fight. you didn't get that guy. Well, you got to fight this person. Yeah. It's never enough. That's one. Two is. When you're already worth over $100 million, is another $25 million going to make a difference? In what? Well, it, w- it would to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it does. Because yeah, I don't have $100 million, yeah, so but the $25 million yeah, would make a Yeah, but I'm saying like if, I, you're, if you're already worth $100 million, does, yeah. does another $25 million make a difference? No. It doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't make a difference. Like there's – the other thing, is, and on top of that, the money situation. His mother lives with him. Like, it's not like he's out buying mansions. The guy's got a property. No. He lives with his wife and his kids and his, and his mom. Like he, every time I talk to him, I just talked to him. We were, we were supposed to have lunch in Riyadh and I didn't get a chance to go meet him and Islam and Abu Bakr and them, you know, um, cause of the fighter meetings, but he was texting, where are you at brother? Where are you at? And I was going to head over there to meet him, but it didn't matter. It was like, Hey, did your kids come with you? He wanted to know if I brought my kids with me to the event. And he wanted to know, like, hey, are they going to come to lunch if they did? If I did, like, these are questions. He's past the, hey, how's training? You know, how have you? Like, he's not yeah. asking about that shit. He's asking about how's your family. And I ask him oh, every word every time I talk to him. My first questions out of my mouth are, how's your mother? Always ask how your mother is. You know, how are the kids? You know, yeah. and those are the things. And that's what's important to him right now. An extra twenty five million dollars isn't going to make his family any better. And so he understands what's important. Like I said, it's never enough. He's not chasing the money. The money's there. He never has to work again if he doesn't want. He doesn't spend, like he was living, and I want to, it's funny, I can't remember what fight it was, but it was right before he fought for the title. He was still living at home with his mom. Yeah, he was living in a three, what, a three-room three apartment? Room, like, yeah, yeah, it was like a three-room <laughs> apartment. I don't know what their idea of an apartment is. Is it a big apartment? Is it not a small? I don't yeah. know what it is. But he was living in, a, in an apartment still. with his mom. And he was making good money. He was already the interim champ. I think is that fight. He was still living with his mom with his mom when he was the interim champ, or whatever it was. Like, it's not it's not a money thing, guys. It's not it's not a money thing. It's not chasing the legacy. It's he understands where he's at. And let's make this a hundred percent clear. Do I consider him the goat? I do not. But where I do consider him, and John, you're the one that turned me on to this, is that he is the most dominant fighter to ever step foot in the cage ever no doubt. he most dominant john jones is obviously to me probably the goat if you get rid of the ped stuff and if it's true or if it's not if picograms i don't care however you cut it john jones is the most talented guy that's ever been in there okay i put gsp right there they and you can mix them go back and forth demetrius johnson right yeah, there. dj there. right there the three of them right yeah. there but the most dominant fighter ever to step foot in that cage is fight Habib. in fight out no doubt no doubt no doubt, no doubt. You know, set the record for the most takedowns was, in, in a three-round fight. Just I was just dominant. I just saw a thing. You know who Inoue is in boxing? Yes. Right? Inoue has had more 10-8 rounds than he has 10-9 rounds. Jeez. That's how dominant he is. Okay? Jeez. That's Habib. He had more 10-8 rounds than 10-9 rounds, basically. Wow. That's saying something, man. I never saw a guy dominate good fighters. I mean good fighters. The way Habib dominated him, he just toyed with yeah. him at times. It was—it's one of those you look at you, you know, as a referee, you're standing there and you can't—you're you not going to sit there and say anything, but you're going, oh, "That sucks." <laughs> it just does. And it—it it only know? got more dominant as he got more confident, and he's got more confident. Oh, yeah. He started becoming more of a man, like in terms of—I don't mean that in a negative way. He matured. His body physically matured. 
you look at him when he fought his first two or three fights, he was this skinny little guy. Like he didn't yeah. look like he had, like he was kind of always thicker in the legs and the ass with the heavy yep. hips, but he had a skinny upper body. He wasn't as built as he, but well, he always had the big back. Yeah. His wide lats back. always wide back. He, he's, dude, it was the one thing when I first saw him, I went, dude, that guy get, grabs a hold of you. You're going to have a hard time getting, he's got some lats that go down to his freaking ass. Yeah. I, and he, I mean, but crazy. he was always somebody, John, that, and he just got better every fight. And it wasn't yeah. like he lacked the confidence when he was younger. He understood how good he was, but he just no, seemed but his like stand up, his stand up started to get so much better yeah. that he wasn't it wasn't just this oh a reliance on I've got to get the fight to the ground. He was he was basically in that I will get the fight to the ground, but when I do, I do. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I remember having plenty of debates with Brennan Schaub about how Connor was going to just piece him up on the feet, and 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 it was a back and forth battle. I was like this. Brent, you don't get Brennan it. has been known to to miss a fight or two, but but it was. <laughs> and I sat on the. He's I, been known to crash a TRX or two. Also, <laughs> I sat on his stage and go, "Hey, man, there's like I'm telling you right now, Connor will not be the same fighter when it comes to the two of them fighting because he'll be so scared of the takedown." Don't be surprised if Habib's able to land the bigger shots or get, you know, to land some good hard shots on him. Sure enough. And that just kind of changes the way the guys fight. All that being said, let's get back to the point. The point is he's not ever coming back. Let's please throw that out the door. It's completely gone. Money is not a factor. He's he's worth over a hundred million dollars. He does not care. Okay. 25 million more is not going to make the big of a difference when you live a simple life. And how how long has he been gone now? Three years? Uh 2020. Almost four. So four. So almost four, four, four and a half. And he, hold on. He's just as popular now as he was when he was fighting. Exactly. Exactly. So fame's definitely not going away. And, and I think he's one of those guys he would like to see it kind of dwindle off. No, I agree. He doesn't care about it. Yep. So, hey, uh, but, uh, look, and money's not a factor. Record's not a factor. He has moved on with his life. He's doing bigger and better things in his eyes. And that's all that matters. And I wish him nothing but the best. So can we please Absolutely. stop? The Habib Nurmagomedov is coming back.